Thank you so much, Colleen. I know I needed that to be calmed and centered this morning. Um, I would like to say good morning to everyone and welcome to Trinity Reformed United Church of Christ. No matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I want to thank you for joining us here in person and online. And I hope that you are truly fed by our worship this day. Today is a communion Sunday, so those online need to prepare their communion elements of bread or cracker, juice and wine ahead of time, so that way later in service you can celebrate the Lord's Supper with us. <laughs> Today we will not be having adult faith formation, but we will have children's uh, Sunday school or faith formation following service. Next week, we will have fellowship time, and it is being sponsored by the education team. I wanted to also let everyone know that we are still actively uh, collecting for the food pantry. Items can be left on the table in the front of the crying room in the rear of the sanctuary. Please drop off any non-perishable items for those less fortunate than ourselves. We are also once again collecting gently worn dress clothing and shoes for those going to court or job interviews who do not have access to these important tools for success. I would also like to share with everyone that we had made a social media post that we are sponsoring a Dungeons and Dragons group that will be meeting on June 17th from four to six we literally had it posted for just uh, just over a day, and it's already half filled. So if anyone is interested, whether it's here online or here in person or online, it's for all ages. And uh, please contact the church office. Uh, don't just like it, contact the church office to let us know that you're interested in joining. I also wanted to let you know that in on June 17th, we will, uh, excuse me, not June 17th, October 21st, we will be participating in Outfest down at Town Park. We will have a tent. So if anyone is interested in helping with that, please see myself or Pastor Steve once he returns from sabbatical. 
Um, we're not sure exactly what the tent will be doing. I know it'll be informal, informational. We might have a game for the kids or the adults. Um, we are not selling anything, so it's just a matter of sitting there, smiling, answering questions, and enjoying the day with everyone else. Um, we are also uh, selling grocery carts uh, will be on sale in the narthex directly following worship. So if you're interested in buying gift cards for Weiss or Giant, you can see, uh, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. not Betty, Connie. No, not Connie. It's Frank and Linda. There we go. You can see Frank and Linda after service today. Also, if you know anyone that is in need of assistance or a visit, please reach out and let Pastor Steve or call the church office and let us know. The visitation team is very uh, open and ready to go out and visit with everyone um, or help if they need groceries or whatever they may need. And finally, let us prepare for worship. Let us empty our minds of anything that would distract us from realizing the presence of God's Holy Spirit during this time of worship. Let us now experience God's spirit. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship found on the walls and in your bulletins. How majestic is God's name in all the earth? We see God's glory in the expanse of the heavens. All plants and animals are God's creation. All that God has made reflects God's goodness. We are created in God's image to relate to God. We receive great abundance and care from our creator. God blesses us day by day with good things. We are given dominion over the works of God. Gather to praise God and greet one another. Celebrate all the ways God has revealed to us. We worship the creator and sustainer of all things. We rejoice in Christ's promise of the Holy Spirit. Our opening hymn is Praise the Lord, the Almighty, the Almighty in your hymnals on the wall and on your screens. Thank you. 
Please join me in the opening prayer found on the walls and in your bulletins and the screens. Triune God, known to us in more ways than we can count, we marvel at the mystery of life and wonder at your attention to our lives. As we ponder the vast expanse of space, we are fascinated by distances too extensive to understand. The times we have measured are a tiny ripple in your eternity. Yet you have honored this planet by revealing yourself in the life and ministry of Jesus and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Let us experience your presence in this time of worship. Amen. Please be seated. All that God has created is very good. Life in all its forms is complex and interrelated. Human life is precious and marvelously linked. Let us confess our neglect and irresponsibility in relationship to all creation and to one another by reciting the prayer of confession found on the walls and on your screens. Amazing God, the more we learn of your creation, the more we are lifted with awe and wonder, yet our vision narrows to our limited concerns and we forget the immense reaches of the stewardship to which you appoint us. We have not taken good care of this tiny spaceship Earth, which is our home. We have not cared well for one another as sisters and brothers. Our doubt outweigh your obedience. O oh God, help us fulfill our baptism and claim our discipleship as forgiven and forgiving sinners. Amen. Let us confess our personal sins in silence. Lord, hear our prayers. We are created in the image of God and are blessed with the capacity to reflect God's will in our daily lives. God cares for us and invests us with in, invests us with responsibility. Thus, God honors us with high expectations and confidence in our willingness to seek out life best for all people. We are loved. We are forgiven. Our baptism is renewed. Be having children's time, so I'd like to invite the youth that are in the back to come forward. It's okay, people can be bashful. Come here, Lily, you can sit right next to me. Lily is my new friend. I just met Lily today. Lily, that's Miss Jane that came up with you. So she's gonna help answer questions so you're not alone, okay? That's always helpful. What I would like to do is ask, do you know what this is? It's a castle. What is it? It's a castle. Oh, it's a castle, you're right. Do you know who was married in this castle not that long ago? A couple years ago? Meghan Markle and Prince Harry were married there. This is Windsor Castle. It's pretty cool looking, isn't it? You can have the picture. So who, who else lives in castles? Princesses, Zara stuck but also men that live in castles too. Yeah, like kings and queens, and like you said, prince and princesses. 
And you know what? Wealthy people normally live in castles. But you know what? Not everyone's wealthy, huh? Well, there's other people that live there too. But we'll get to that in just a little bit. But those castles, that, that castle that you were holding, do you see all the fields and the gardens? Well, the castles were actually built to sustain those that were living there. They were there, they were created to provide everything that they would ever need or want. Inside those walls, there were often gardens and stables and even livestock like cows and sheep. Well, everything they needed, like I said, was provided there. And then there was people that helped them, the servants. And the servants would help to provide for those living in the castle as well. And sometimes they lived right on those grounds. Did you know that everything that we have is provided to us too? You did, that's fantastic. How about you, Jane? Did you know that we have everything? that could be provided? I think so. Wow, I got two really smart cookies up here. Well, we may not be kings or queens, but, and we may not even be as, as wealthy and have all that money that they do, but we are provided by God. God gives us everything that we should ever want or need. Sometimes that's a little, looks different for everyone though. God created the heavens that we see above us, created the earth that we walk on, created the animals of the sea and the, of the air and in the land, and all the plants and trees that we see around us. And you know what? God even created us. You know. Sure. Once I knew that, um, actually, before we were born, he put us in the bornness of our family. That's right, because he was with you right from the very, very beginning. Isn't that neat? And that's exciting. Well, we get to be thankful to God for everything that he gave us that we need to live. So you know how we can do that? We can take care of the things that we have around us that need to survive, like the earth and others that live on it. We can take care of each other. We can take care of the environment. We can take care of the animals, the plants, the water, and even the people around us, like our mommies and our brother and our family and our friends. Unfortunately, though, not everyone takes care of the earth or their family and friends. So that's why we, not just you, not just me or Miss Jane, but all of us need to work together to take care of each other and to take care of the planet. But do you know how we can do that? By helping people with their things that they need help with. Very good, by helping others by the things that they need help with. So what I'm going to do is challenge you and Jane and every single person in the congregation and everyone that's visiting us online. This week, here at Trinity, we and some of the members that have, are starting a new organization that will thank God pro by providing all we need by taking care of the environment and each other. It will teach people how to live eco-friendly. In other words, live that you take care of the earth and all around it. That means that people can learn new ways of doing things that help the environment or our earth and help each other so we don't have to be wealthy to have those things that we need to lead, live. We can come together just like the disciples of Jesus's day and take care of the wonderful things that God created, which includes you and me. So do you think you can be a part of a new organization to show God that you appreciate everything that God has provided you? I not only bet you can, I know you all can. So let us pray. 
Mother and Father Earth of this earth, you give us all that we need to survive, and we often want even more. Help us to appreciate what we have and help others to experience the joy of living while protecting your creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can go back and join your mommy. Yep, you can keep that. <clears throat> Our Old Testament lesson for this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through chapter 2, verse 4. This creation story affirms the goodness of all that God has made. As human beings created in the image of God, we are called to be stewards caring for all that God has made. <clears throat> Beginning in verse 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day, and God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding the seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day, and God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. <clears throat> and let, and, <clears throat> and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light, light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day, and God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with, with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And then there was evening and there was morning. The fifth day, God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle over and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. 
God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to every that, everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning. On the sixth day, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Here ends our first reading. Our gospel lesson is from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Jesus gives his disciple a purpose and a promise. He offers the first and final word for the church's mission, to draw all people into relationship with God, beginning in verse 16. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go forth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the ages. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and believe. I will be presenting the sermon that Pastor Steve wrote before he left for his sabbatical. It's a little more technical than I'm used to, and it's quite a humdinger for me to read, so please bear with me. But on that note, let us pray. God of creation, Bless us once again as we look deep into our beginnings. Help us to preserve what you have created and love what you have made us as we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth might be pleasing and acceptable to you on this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. One would be hard pressed to find a single passage in all of scripture that is the source of more foundational Judeo-Christian theology than this text in Genesis that Miss Jane read. This creation narrative, along with the second in Genesis chapter two, verses four through 25, provides for our understanding of God's pre-existence, God's ability to create, and God's dominion over the natural world. These passages also lay out the created order of the creatures that existed, especially those created in the image of God. In our first creation story, our lesson today, humanity is created to be the spiritual as well as literal children of God made in God's likeness and image. Both the man and the woman bear this image and as such are both heirs of the divine nature granted to all humans. In the second creation story, humanity is created to be the farmer who tills the soil of the garden God has created. Genesis is also considered to be in the genre of myth, simply meaning that no one was there to witness what happened, and it is taken on faith without any via viable proof. So myth would not be considered an historical account of what actually happened. And while Moses is considered the writer of Genesis, 
Scholars do believe that it was most likely priests who collected ancient accounts, recorded related traditions, and gathered those sacred writings into collections sometime during the Babylonian exile. These writings would manifest the priestly writings worldview and style of that writing. For example, the priestly writers used the name Elohim for God rather than Yahweh that is used in Genesis 2. The priestly writers reserved the use of the special name for God, that of Yahweh, for Exodus 3, where Moses is speaking to the, bor bor bleh, to the burning bush. So we can see that the creation account in Genesis 1 is more systematic, while the second creation story in Genesis 2 is more informal. This confirms that Genesis 1 account to be the priestly writings who believe everything should be kept in a proper order. <laughs> I kind of like that. Another interesting point is that the priestly writers practically mirror an old Mesopotamian story, story called the Enuma Elish about creation. In fact, both those stories start with the phrase, in the beginning. The priestly writers, in effect, produces a creation account that says, you have heard it said, but I say, repeating an older creation story utilizing their worldview. The priestly writer does not use certain elements of the Uma Elish that contained other gods and wars that were created um, in on earth at that time or in that account. Those were all omitted. In their place is an account that is ordered creating a universe and introducing a species that is no less than the children of God. The concept of time, the future of light and dark, seasons of the year, the movement of the planets, sun and moon, the separation of the waters, the description of plant and animal life are included in this version of the creation story. Reproduction of plant life and sexuality with two types of human beings make for a comprehensive understanding of creation and God's hand in all of it. And the beautiful element is that on the seventh day when God rested. It is the key element to understand the holiness of God. There is time to create or work, and there is time to rest and to worship, to appreciate the works of our God. Consider that this may have been written during the exile where their temples laid ruin. This account shows a God that is not confined to one earthly temple, but is transcendent and meets humanity in the sacredness of the Sabbath. But do we appreciate what God has provided for us in this sacred space that God provides? Well, this is a question we have to ask ourselves today. While we have learned that the creation story found in Hebrew scriptures may not be the first of its kind, it does lay out a structured process that provides for our needs. It allows us to see God's handiwork in action and how methodical process gave life to the universe. But let's take a look at how we've treated this creation of God. Pollution threatens our very lives. Climate change, man-made or not, is wreaking havoc on weather, creating floods, record snowfalls, wildfires, tornadoes that have cost human lives to be lost. Well, what are we doing about it? 
Landfills continue to be filled with materials that won't decompose for thousands, if not millions of years. And it's not just landfills, it's our oceans and seas, they're filled with plastic, that the sea life that we are supposed to take care of is being threatened every day. Greenhouse gases continue to rise along with the global temperature, and yet we refuse to give up fossil fuels or even limit them in small cases. Politicians on both sides have different views and claim that climate change may be fake news and is a way for, the cra a way for craziness to destroy capitalism and our government. So while the priestly writers strove to provide an orderly, almost scientific styled account about creation, we human beings refuse to listen to the science of our time and the order solution that will save us. This is why here at Trinity UCC, we are working with a group of community volunteers to bring an educational and resource-driven organization that will promote eco-friendly living for those in our community and maybe even be examples for those around the world. This is how we become part of the solution and not part of the problem. This is how we show our appreciation to God for God's creation and all the provisions we are fortunate to have. May we come together as one to show our love for God and our neighbor by respecting, protecting, and loving the creation God has blessed us all with. Amen. Let us now continue our service with the hymn of response, All Things Bright and Beautiful, uh, 61 in your hymnals, on the walls, and on your screens at home. be seated. Um, Greg, do you mind checking the back basket for me? This is our time of service when I remind you to take notes 
of the people mentioned in our joys and concerns and join your list today with the ones from last week and place it on a refrigerator, your nightstand, coffee table, anywhere that will remind you to share God's love with others through your prayers. This is a vital ministry here at Trinity and one that has had amazing results. Today, I would like to lift up a joy that it is Colleen and Ken, 35th anniversary today. Isn't that awesome? And now I'd like to ask for a couple prayers of concern. One is Jane Coons is lifting up her relative, Luann. She has been uh, recently diagnosed with brain cancer. She has started treatment, so please keep Luann in prayer. I would also like for special prayers to be for Leroy Lucas Jr. He is in re a rehab facility called the Manor at Penn Village in Sealands Grove. He was at Geisinger for about a week with a staph infection in his blood, and he received IV antibiotics at that time. He is doing better, but is concerned since he hasn't had the opportunity in about a week and a half to visit his mom, Vera, at Vintage Knowles, that she may be lonely. I did visit her this past week a few times, but if anyone else is interested in visiting, he would really appreciate it. And of course, he would appreciate prayers for continued healing for himself as well. And if you're interested in uh, visiting with Vera, please reach out to myself or give me a call or call the church office and we can give you her room number and any information that may, you may need. We are also asking, yeah, we are also asking for prayers for, for, for Crystal Lynn uh, Gillespie. She is the pastry chef that uses our kitchen in the evenings. Um, and she has been under the weather uh, off and on for the past week or so. Um, and we just ask for continued prayers. It's a chronic condition that she sometimes suffers from, but prayers for healing, comfort are definitely appreciated. And as always, I remind you to send in your joys and concerns to us through email, text, or phone, and we will be sure to include them in our next service. Now, let us pray. God of all creation, whose attention focused on the earth in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and whose gift of the Holy Spirit has empowered Christ's disciples through the years. May our worship unite the saints in mutual caring that our witnesses to the world may reflect the grace of Jesus Christ. Your love for all humankind and the communion of the Holy Spirit. As today we ask mindfully that you watch over and comfort our friends in Christ, such as our homebound, those in life care centers, rehab centers, those on our prayer list, as well as those we have named here today. And we celebrate with you the saints of this church that serve and love you and all the people. Now, in a moment of silence, hear those prayers too privately to speak aloud. Lord, hear our prayers. May we keep these special people in our prayers, in our hearts, and in our minds as we go through the next week and let us say what it is that we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From there, he will be ju judged the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What will we return to God for all the bounty of the universe we have been given to enjoy? We cannot count the blessings of life which God supplies to us. The mandate of Christ is clear. Go and make disciples of all the nations. That means we must, first of all, accept our own discipleship in wholehearted obedience and self-giving service. God expects no less than all we have and all we are. So let us consider going to the church's website at www.trinityreformeducc.org and present your offerings to God online or by sending in your church envelopes as best you are able. Those who are here in person can drop the offering in the basket at the rear of the sanctuary. be seated and at this time I would like to invite the children or Lily if you would like to come back up I'm gonna have a teaching moment with you and the teaching moment today is going to be about communion so come right here so I wanted to explain to you a little bit about communion because I heard from a little birdie called your mommy that this is the first time that you will be participating in communion. So she wants you to understand a little bit about it, okay? Well, when Jesus was on earth, he participated in Passover with his disciples or followers. Passover is a Jewish holiday where the, where the Jewish people were freed from slavery out of Egypt, and it's remembered during Passover, okay? During it, he took a big cracker, and he lifted it up, and he also took wine, which you're going to see me do later, and lift that up, and he celebrated it with his disciples, and he had a meal, and that honored God. In church, we use bread and crackers to represent that big piece of matzah, and we use juice or wine for adults as a symbol to remember what Christ did for us and continues to do for us every day. So, during communion, we also remember that Jesus died on the cross rose from the dead in three days and returned to be with God. So we now can know that we are forgiven and that we have eternal life. So when we celebrate communion, like we will in a few moments, we will remember what Jesus taught us and what Jesus did for all the people so we can show love our love for God and for Jesus. So I'm going to give you something extra special, and I'm going to give you two of them. So you can take one back for your brother, too, if Mommy would like you, to, like you both to do it. Okay? So you're going to get some special crackers, which are goldfish crackers. And you are going to get not only just a little taste, but you're gonna get your own juice box so you can participate in communion with all of us here in church, as well as everybody that's on watching online. Does that sound good? Okay, there you go. You can go back to your seat and be with your mommy. Ooh. Take your time.
Come to the communion, oh, sorry, let us now celebrate the Lord's Supper. All are welcome at this table. You need not be a member of Trinity Reformed UCC to partake in the elements. Here we are also allowing children to partake in communion with the permission of their parents. For those online, we ask that you have your bread, cracker, or wafer available, and your juice or wine prepared as well. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall not thirst. Therefore, this table is for all who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. In the presence of all who hunger for spiritual food, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the sharing of this life-giving meal. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We rejoice in Jesus Christ, your son, our savior, who was born of your servant, Mary, and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. We celebrate Christ's life. We remember Christ's death. And we rejoice in the resurrection of Christ. We take courage in the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst, and with all the prophets, martyrs, and saints, and all the company of heaven, we glorify your holy name. As they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Jesus then took the cup, after giving thanks, gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured for many of our for the forgiveness of sins. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this consecrated bread and bless this consecrated fruit of the vine. Bless us in our eating and drinking at this table that our eyes may be open and that we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst and in one another. Together, in the strength, strength Christ, Christ gives, gives us, we offer ourselves to you, you eternal God, God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessings, we participate in the new life Christ gives. Come, all things are ready. If there's anyone uh, that has a gluten allergy, please raise your hand and I will bring it around for you. We have yours already.
a reminder that the uh, wine is on the exterior and is the darker liquid and that the juice uh, grape juice is right in the middle and Jamie do you mind coming back and giving <laughs> thank you sorry I forgot mine. The blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. We give thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by, grant, by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world with courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of your most holy spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Please join me in the blessing and commission found on the walls and in your bulletins. <clears throat> Go out to tell the world that God cares. Celebrate the gift of life and all its po possibilities. We are awed by God's vast creations. We are amazed at how God honors us. God has given us stewardship over creation. We are given the care of every living thing. Land and sea and air are ours to enjoy. All are entrusted to our careful watch. Generations before us have passed on God's gifts. Generations to follow depend on our faithfulness. We pray for insight and generosity to save this legacy. We seek to live in peace and love with everyone. I also didn't want to forget to lift up all of our graduates uh, from yesterday or this coming weekend, especially our own Danny or Sloan Frankenfield. Please make sure you congratulate him as you leave service today. Uh oh, I lost part of my spot. <laughs> I'll find it. There we go. Today you have heard of opportunity for you to participate in amazing undertaking by this church for the community at its grassroots. Simply put, we can't keep doing church the same way we have been doing for the past 215 years. We need to be creative and Christ commanded activities that truly make us the body of Christ. We need to love God by loving God's creation of the earth and by t maintaining its habit, habitat. And we need to love God by loving God's creation, that of human beings, by caring and accepting all people. Let us commit today to a new way of church and solidify our presence for the future. Amen. Let us conclude service with our closing hymn for the fruits of this creation, number 714 in your hymnals, on the screens, and on the walls. <laughs>
go in peace.